Welcome to Destinations Unveiled. I'm your host, Amanda, owner of Adventure More, a travel design agency specializing in custom adventure travel. Join me as we explore the world's most fascinating places, offering insights, inspirations, and travel advice from industry friends around the globe. On today's episode, we're joined by my friend, Shanali, to talk about India. Welcome, Shanali. Hi, thank you. I'd love to get started. If you would tell us a little bit about yourself and what drew you to being a part of the travel industry. Well, it was really um, my hobbies of reading, research, meeting people, and traveling. They all came mm -hmm. together in this job, which is what my job really is. And I mean, the most yeah. enjoyable part of my job is, of course, the meeting of people and research work I do. Love that bit. So... Um, there it was. I just brought my hobbies into my profession. Fantastic. And and to you, what makes India such a special destination? You know, what makes India special is two. It's one, which it's a destination within a destination. Every day is different. Even I, I've been born and brought up here. I've been doing this job for 20 years. Even now when mm -hmm. I travel, I will always find something new. I'll always find something that charms me, engrosses me, um, you know, mm -hmm. draws me in. I keep, it's, it really is a journey of discovery in India, no matter how many times you travel. So every day is different. Every day. No two days is alike. And that's what makes, keeps it really fresh and makes it such an intensely, um, interesting destination to to visit it's also uh and it's also uh in the best possible way an assault of your senses it's sight <laughs> it's the sounds it's the smells it's the you yeah. know it's the sense of touch and taste all that makes it i i don't think i have known people who've ever left india without being touched by something in india whereas the smiles of the people or just what they've seen and experienced. Yeah, absolutely. Is there a better time of the year to visit or what's your favorite time of the year? Okay, so your best time really to visit is October to I would say middle of March because that's mm -hmm. our sort of winter and it's the dry season. Uh, the nicest possible times really is um, uh, January, February, March. You know, we have blue skies, wonderful weather. But again, if you're going up into the mountains, then the, our summer, May, June, July, is a good time to go up into the mountains. But the times to avoid in India really is July, August, September, which is our rains. So it's okay. hideously hot and humid. Just not, a, I mean, the mangoes are fantastic, but about, apart from that, <laughs> not, a good, not a good time to be here. <laughs> Probably not coming just for the mangoes. <laughs> I know. I, know but it's, I mean, I hate leaving at that time, but yeah, it's the time we all flee the country. Okay. Um, do you have a favorite adventure activity? Um, okay, so my favorite is uh, going out into the wilderness. Uh, mm -hmm. Really, there is this wonderful area, which is just stunning wilderness called Jawai. And then going for a walk, with uh, the shepherds. I love doing that. Every day with them is different. You go for a walk with the shepherds when they're taking out their um, their, their sheep or their goats. Mm -hmm. And nobody yeah. knows the parts better than them. And you will see parts of that wilderness, which is uh, you wouldn't normally see from a jeep. So I love just going right. strolling with them in the mornings and in the evening. It's unplanned, organic. You don't know what will happen. You could come across a leopard, you could come across something else, or it could just be uh -huh. a walk, a walk. Yeah, but it's wonderful. It yeah, it's wonderful walking with them. And learning so much from them, I, I would imagine. It's learning from them. It's also a very magical time, especially in the evenings, because mm -hmm. uh, the, the countryside in India in the evenings is magical. It's what we call the cow duster. It's when the the, the cattle and the sheep are coming home and all you hear mm -hmm. is the sound of their bells and the whistle of the shepherds as they try and put them together and mm -hmm. the temple bells and it's just a magical time and then you're just walking with them so yeah. uh, it is a, it is a very it is a magical time 
Yeah. What about a unique cultural activity that really you find really brings people together? I'm so, sure there's so many different opportunities. That... There, there are lots of things you could do something from, and my favorite is to pull in a festival. So for mm -hmm. instance, if you've taken the festival of Holi, which is our festival of color, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. is when we welcome it, when we welcome in the spring. So that happens in about March. And it's just a festival mm -hmm. of sheer joy because it's all about color. And we fling colored powder at each other and then go around looking like aliens for days. But it's a day that we just <laughs> you it's just such a joyous festival. And I have so many clients who come down to celebrate it in different parts of of India. We set up, you know, they go and celebrate with families, they celebrate it in a village, you know, and it's just a great way to get beneath the surface of the country. I, there's nothing mm -hmm. like a festival that gets you. So, the, uh, you know, festivals, we have 365 days of festivals. So to draw in a festival into an itinerary, whether it's a tribal festival somewhere, or the time we welcome the goddess to earth, or the festival of Holi, any one of them brings that special touch to an itinerary. It gives you really that wow moment. Sure. Oh, amazing. Do you have a favorite accommodation or type of accommodation you like to include in itineraries? Um, okay, so in India, where the range is so huge, you get from five-star mm -hmm. luxury hotels to the mm -hmm. small, charming, what I call Indian hotels, which have mm -hmm. a sense of history, to wonderful tented camps. But what I do try and do in any itinerary is to take you out of the city. And take okay. you into rural, take you into rural India, into one of these mansions that have been um, renovated by the family. So mm -hmm. it's very much like the Riyadh of Morocco, but right out in the country. So it's like mm -hmm. an, staying in somebody's estate, staying mm -hmm. in their home, and then exploring with them. So you're seeing a totally different face of India. It's a different rhythm of India. It's a, it's different traditions. It's where um, you know, traditional India meets modern India. So you will go into a, you know, you'll go into a village which is very traditional, but you will still see the cell phone and the satellite dishes. That's where modern India. But you are touring with the family, so it's a very, very deep, insightful, personalized tour that you're having. And I love including That's a couple of those, and then taking you back into mainstream, but definitely taking sure. you off the into one of those yes. accommodations. I love that. That's wonderful. What about a favorite restaurant? Or, I mean, India is so well known for its food, but do you have any favorite restaurants? Um, okay, that's a really hard one. Because you, <laughs> it is hard. Because the best, yeah. food, the best food you really get is on the streets, but obviously okay. you can't get tourists to eat on the streets. Uh, yeah. But you know what's really developing in India, which is really great, is uh, this fusion of international flavors and Indian mm -hmm. ingredients. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and that makes it very interesting. Like any blended or food that is uh, fusion is very interesting, and sure. that's really that's really growing in India. So. You can actually do, you could go to one of those restaurants and have this um, contempt, what we call contemporary Indian cuisine. Mm -hmm. And then you can also go to somebody's house and then have a completely traditional meal. So you can get that mm -hmm. whole contrast in your, in your food journey, culinary journey through India. Yeah. What about any hidden gems that someone should be sure to see or do? Are there anything that comes to mind that really stands out yeah i think if you're talking about hidden gems it's um uh going out into i think well one of the places is to go and go off the beaten track and visit places like mm -hmm. Hampi, which are um, it's a unesco architectural site very few people go mm -hmm. so that's from the sightseeing side it's absolutely extraordinary because just spread out on this area of 
massive boulders is just strewn with ruins of a forgotten city. So that's one place to visit. But it's also if you go um, into the desert, into um, into one of the villages, and you come across this temple where they do have a shaman. Um, he's a shepherd, and he becomes a shaman on a full moon night. Mm -hmm. um, that's one of my favorites, which I take a lot of people to see. And he's just a shepherd, and then he takes on this persona, and he starts telling you your future and solving your problems. So, and that then, of course, <laughs> yeah, that, that's really neat. Actually, it's really neat because the whole temple has horses because he comes with his warriors. So he'll say to okay. you, my 25 warriors will come and save you. So everybody brings him these beautiful terracotta horses because every warrior needs a horse. Hmm. So the temple has these beautiful terracotta horses which they donate to him so he can come to them in times of trouble. So it's all oh those little, God. you know, it's those little stories, it's those little hidden, yes. you know, that happens. Or for instance, when you're in Delhi, going for a walk uh, down a street that has graffiti done by young artists. You know, we have an art fair in India, which is very exclusive high-end art. To try and bring art to the people, a lot of the artists go out on the streets and paint on the walls. So you have a whole art district in Delhi, which very few people know about. So it's yeah. those unexpected little things that uh, we try and bring together to, which makes India so unexpected. Because nobody really expects that. You've got tigers, you've got Taj Mahal, everybody knows that. But nobody thinks of the fact that, you know, there's the, there's the street art, there's craft, which you can go and see. There's these little mm -hmm. temple ceremonies, you know, there's a lot you can bring to create a, make a creative tour yeah is there anything our viewers should know before visiting india um no i think what you need to be prepared for and a lot of people ask us that mm -hmm. when you is the poverty and yes mm -hmm. it does exist like anywhere in the mm -hmm. world there's nothing more grinding than urban poverty so when you land in delhi i can't hide it from you it's there you will have that person tapping on your window but when you leave Delhi and you go out of Delhi, it gets less. And then what you see, you have to judge from the fact it's not poverty. They have a home. Um, but remembering that in India, we don't buy multiple cars and we don't buy multiple homes. We have a home, but everything that we have, we put into jewelry. So look at the jewelry that the women wear, and that will give you an idea mm -hmm. of their wealth. Because everything mm -hmm. goes towards educating their children and getting them married. So they'll have their little okay. piece of land and they'll have their house. So you have to judge it from that point of view. That You also have to be prepared for the fact that in India, we don't, we're not very private people. So people will ask you the most unexpected questions. They'll never think twice. Of, Why yeah. aren't you married? Do you have children? Where is your husband? Do you, you know, yeah. They're not being intrusive. They just be, they want you to ask them the same questions, even if you don't want okay. to. So uh, yeah. privacy is not, because we live so it, cheek by jowl, privacy is not something we, we really know about. But yeah. it's not. You, can, you come to India with an open book. You come to India with an open mind. You come to India knowing that time is um, flexible but everything will happen in its own time. You have to leave, you have to just come to India and and be, and know that we will take care of it and there's no point you stressing and wanting to think to happen right on time or um, you know, in a certain way. You just have to be flexible. I say India is a country that encourages you just to be and let everybody right. else take care of you. Absolutely. And that's why it's so nice to work with partners like yourself, where you you know this, the culture, you know the, the way things go, and you can plan and take care of everything for us, for our travelers, um, so that you're looking after um, every step of the way. Correct. I mean, we're there holding your hand every step of the way. 
-hmm. you're definitely there holding your hand without being intrusive high touch not intrusive sure but i think in in, in india you just have to come with a higher sense of tolerance mm -hmm. and as That's i said nice. just go with the flow <laughs> perfect <laughs> is there any other final wisdom you'd like to share um, no, it's just as I said, when you come to India, don't come with any preconceived ideas. A lot of what you see and what you read about um, is very different to the reality of India. And the reality is gentle. It's not as shocking as you think it is. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's in many ways a very gentle country. It's a very friendly country. Um, uh, we love people. And you come with an open book. And then, you know, you just write your story while you're here. Don't come with mm -hmm. something pre-planned in your head. Sure. That's great. Well, thank you so much for joining me today, Shanali. Um, thank and you. thanks, everybody, for watching. This has been fantastic. I appreciate your time. Well, if you'd like to, to learn more about Trev... Oh, sorry, go ahead. I said we need to bring you here now. Yes, I've been once, um, but it was a, a wildlife safari. So I vet, visited several tiger tiger parks and um, saw all the nature. So I'll need to come back for more of a an immersive experience. Immersive so, experience. Yes, yeah. If you'd like to learn more about traveling in India, you can visit us online at adventuremore.travel or email us at hello at adventuremore.travel. Thanks again and happy travels. Thanks again, Shanali.